And now, stay tuned for the program that is rated tops in popularity for a longer period of time than any other West Coast program in radio history. The Signal Oil Program, The Whistler. Signal, the famous go-farther gasoline, invites you to sit back and enjoy another strange story by The Whistler. I am The Whistler, and I know many things for I walk by night. I know many strange tales hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. And now for the Signal Oil Company, the Whistler's strange story, Fatal Action. happened suddenly. The motor ship came swiftly out of the fog bank, struck the offshore reef with a grinding crash. The startled crew yelled impulsive directions at each other as the sea poured through the gaping wound in the ship's hull. She heeled over fast, doomed, and everyone on board knew it. Most of all, Captain Ernie Hill knew it as he snapped his orders with machine gun precision. All hands, prepare to abandon ship! Load the lifeboat! He rushed from the bridge rail, dropped to the quarterdeck, and continued barking orders. There was excitement, yes, but a minimum of confusion before the lifeboat swung out on their davits, dropped neatly into the sea, and began to pull safely away with their loads of men. And not until he was certain that his ship was through, headed for the bottom, did Captain Hill leave her. Moments later, standing in the lifeboat, he watched in silence until his ship upended and her bow disappeared beneath the waves. He shook his head. Gone. She's gone. Not much you could have done about it, Captain. The company will be satisfied you got everybody off. Yeah, I don't know. It's rotten luck. This isn't the first ship I've lost this way. And the whole cargo. Ah, it could have happened to anybody, Captain. A lot of uncharted reefs all around here. Yeah, I guess so. I just hope the company sees it that way. You're pleased, aren't you, Ernie, at the attitude of the crew? When you make your report to the company, it helps to get the backing of the entire crew. That you couldn't have saved the cargo. That you did well to keep from losing any lives. It's going well, isn't it? And a week later, when the excitement has died down, you're able to follow the next step in your plan. The lucrative step. You sell the cargo, the cargo everyone thinks was lost with the ship, but which was never put aboard in the first place. For a while, you enjoy the luxury of idleness, spending some of your new wealth. Then after a few weeks, you're assigned to a new motor ship, an inter-island cargo boat, the Prowler, and for three months, you're an exemplary captain. Not a single misstep on your part. Then one day, three months later, at anchor in Rangoon, you're alone in your cabin when the door opens abruptly and someone steps in. Hello, darling. Uh, Lucille! Glad to see me here. Oh, glad. You bet I'm glad. Oh, come here. Let me take a look at you. You come here. I've traveled a long way. <laughs> uh, the same old Lucille. Uh, not quite the same, Ernie. No, no, that's right. You looked me up. Came after me. That's a change. <laughs> Oh, you look swell, baby. Real good. I... Well, what are we waiting for anyway? Come in. Ernie, I have missed you, darling. Oh, I've missed you. But you wouldn't think of writing. Right? Mm. Where, Lucille? And why? I know you. When you say you want to think something out, well, that's the way it is. You do know me, don't you? Yes, yeah, skip it. You're back. Yeah. You know what it means, darling? What, any? The way it'll be with me, it's a feast or a famine, darling, like always. None of the things you always wanted, only... Only what, Annie? 
Well, I, I can't tell you too much, not now, but maybe the picture will be a little prettier than the last one I painted. Really? Darling, you mean you have a sideline? <laughs> maybe. Something like that. But never mind that now. Oh, it's been a long time, Lucy. I gotta have my arms around you. Got it. Oh. Please, darling, not just now. What? He'll be coming in to talk to you any moment, discuss our accommodations, what to do with the baggage. What, what are you talking about? Who'll be coming oh, in? Oh, I'm sorry. Didn't the first mate tell you? I uh, I came aboard with my husband. Your, your husband? Yes. You see, Ernie, I did think everything out. And the future did look black the last time we were together, and I did want things. I see. So you got him, huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you married him. And I might have known. But it isn't going any further, Lucille. I'll tell your husband this is a freight boat and there are no accommodations. Not for you two. You know, Annie, I think you're wrong. Yeah? Mm -hmm. You see, my husband is Charles Collins. His father owns this shipping line. Collins? Lucille, you don't know what you're saying. You didn't bring Collins on board my ship. Correction, darling, not your ship. His. And now, don't you really think you should be getting this putt-putt underway? It's a terrible shock, isn't it, Ernie? Lucille came back to you, yes, but with a husband, Charles Collins, a man whose father owns the inter-island boat company you work for. And in spite of your protests, they're going to sail with you. You've got to meet him cordially, laugh, try to bluff your way through. You chat with him near the aft rail as the prowler moves out from the pier at Rangoon. Ah, underway at last, eh, Captain? I'm going to enjoy this trip. I, uh, I've had little chance to talk to you, Mr. Collins. Oh, not Mr. Collins. Make it child, eh? Okay. I'm ashamed of busting in on you, insisting on going along. Should have cabled, I suppose, or written, but... This wife of mine, Captain. Oh, that's all right. <laughs> I understand. She wanted a sea voyage. And when she insists upon something... Talking about me, Joe? Uh, oh. Well, you were in the cabin, Lucille. Captain, I understand you're acquainted with my wife. Uh, yes, yes. We're, we're acquainted. My favorite captain. You'll like him, Charles. You'll find he's very conscientious. Uh, Dad must know a good man when he sees one. All the trouble he has running this line. Oh, your father's all right. He knows his business. <laughs> yes, I suppose. Uh, well, if... You'll excuse me. I'll start unpacking. See you in the cabin, Lucille. In a few minutes, Charles. Stop in for a drink before dinner, Captain. Thanks. I might do that. Lucille, I wish I hadn't brought him on board this ship. Worried, Captain? Maybe. About the um, sideline you mentioned. That has nothing to do with this boat. Oh? I thought it had to do with all the boats you command. What are you driving at, Lucille? You don't know? <laughs> I'll enlighten you, darling. Your last ship, the one that struck a reef and sunk. That wasn't an accident, Ernie. No? No. You had to sink that ship to cover up. Cover up the fact that our hole was full of cheap ballast that you'd hijack the cargo. Oh, now, wait a you minute. You wait a minute, Ernie. I happen to know the facts. What I don't know is what happens next. Since it's too soon for another shipwreck, what are you smuggling, darling? What port do we put into in the dead of night? What's the signal, the arrangement, and most important, how much is the payoff? You're out of line, Lucille, way out of line. <laughs> oh, no, darling. I know all about it. Every detail, except perhaps what you're smuggling. Something small, easy to handle, I'll bet. What is it? Jade? Ivory? Diamonds? Dope, maybe. You've been reading dime novels, Lucille. You better close the book right now. No, darling. You remember George? Uh, what, George Adams? Mm -hmm. Your old shipmate when you were skipper of the Asaga Maru. What about him? You haven't seen him. George is in prison. I know. And very lonely, too. The prisons do have visiting days. You went to see George Adams? Several times. I even told him some little white lies. Just to make him feel better. I believe I said, I'll wait for you forever, Georgie. Why, you cheap Please, little... darling. Charles just might be watching from the cabin. What do you want? What are you after, Lucille? Half, my precious. Fifty-fifty of the proceeds of your side. You're being pretty foolish, Lucille. If I had anything planned, do you think I'd go ahead with it with your husband on board? Oh, I can keep him busy. 
And you have got something planned, haven't you? Maybe. Yeah. Maybe somebody's going to meet us at a certain dock. Well, they still can, darling. I'll have Charles go ashore with me. I'll keep him away. No. No dice, Lucille. You spoiled it for us. The whole deal's off. <laughs> no. No, Ernie. My captain. Whatever the deal is, it's very much on. You're not backing out of anything. I'll see that you don't. <laughs> The high compression motors of many of today's newer cars are designed and built to perform best on a premium quality gasoline such as Signal Ethyl. But if you're driving an older model, you may think ethyl gasoline wouldn't make any difference in your car. Well, if you'd see some of the vintage models that fill up at the Signal Ethyl pump and hear the enthusiasm of their owners, you'd change your mind. For instance, a chap who lives up in a hilly section was relating... You should hear some cars clatter when they try to pull my hill. But with Signal Ethel, my 41 model takes it in high and without a ping. Another driver of a 39 car remarked, On cold mornings, I hear some of my friends complaining about hard starting. But with Signal Ethel, my car starts quick as a rabbit. Yes, folks say mighty nice things about Signal Ethel because this premium quality gasoline is engineered to bring out the best in any car of any age. So if you'd like to see just how much pleasure driving can be, why not try this little experiment? Treat your car to just a couple of tankfuls of Signal Ethel. See if you don't feel the difference, a wonderful difference, in Signal Ethel. going badly, isn't it, Ernie? Your profitable sideline is being seriously threatened. Until now, you've had it all to yourself. Only your first mate to pay off, and that for valuable assistance. Now, Lucille is declaring herself in. 50-50, she said, and simply for keeping her husband, Charles Collins, ashore. Your ship, the Prowler, bears steadily forward. Jake, the first mate, confronts you near the aft rail and bluntly speaks his own views. You've got to forget the whole blooming thing, Captain. Call it off. How, Jake? How can we call it off? Pete's meeting us at the dock in Bouquet. That she's brought that Mr. Collins aboard for no good. I say it's spying on us. Peeping. That's what it is. Bouquet. So that's where it's to take place. Mrs. Collins, Captain. I... Get lost, Jake. I'll talk to you later. Right on, Captain. Whatever you say. Bouquet. That quaint little port village. You pick such romantic settings, Captain such nefarious goings-on. But in a place like that, it'll be easy to see that Charles takes me ashore. Look, Lucille, you married your money. Why risk all our necks for more? You're not Mrs. Collins, Ernie. I am. I'm in a much better position to know my financial needs. Charles doesn't give me a cent. He did at first, not now. <laughs> Ernie, stop it. <laughs> sure. Sure, but you got to admit it's some music. Oh, Ernie, please, after we get the money... When the voyage is over, you can quit this ship. I can quit Charles. No, cut Please, it off. Please, Annie, darling, we'll have everything then. The two of us. I hate him, Annie. I really hate him. Sometimes I think You're I... lying. You're lying in your teeth. You don't mean a word. <sighs> don't I, Annie? Can you still say I don't mean a word? Why, you little devil. You... <laughs> I'll get him off the ship, Annie. We'll be in the village while you take care of everything, and then later... All right, we'll... all right. But you got to be sure, Lucille. Get him off early, right after we dock in Bouquet. Shortly after nightfall, the prowler docks at Bouquet. Standing at the ship's rail with the mate, you watch the crew scramble ashore. You wait, your eyes glued to the door of the Collins cabin. Finally, it opens. Lucille and her husband step out, nod to you, and move down the gangplank. Well, you were right, Skipper. She's kept her end of the bargain. Sure, I told you there was nothing to worry about. Coast is clear now. Good. I'll go down to the dock. Pete should be there by now. We'll get this thing over with. You need any help carrying it, Captain? 
When it's jade, the quality of this stuff, it doesn't take much of a load. Now, go on below and get ready to go ashore and celebrate. I'll be right back. Right, old Captain. The dock is quiet, deserted, as you move cautiously to your rendezvous with Pete. As planned, you meet him at one end of the dock, make a quick exchange of your jade for his money, and hurry back to the ship. The whole transaction takes less than half an hour, and you congratulate yourself. Smuggling jade is far simpler than sinking your ship, isn't it, Ernie? Back on board, you meet Jake, just coming back on deck. Everything all right, Skipper? Perfect, Jake, just perfect. Fine, Captain, that's fine. I think I will step ashore now. That's celebration, you know. Come in. <laughs> now, you run along, Jake. Tie one on for me, huh? You're pleased, aren't you, Ernie? It went well, very well. And now, alone on the deck of the prowler, you watch Jake fade out of sight and then turn and walk to your cabin. As you enter and turn on the lights, Good evening, Captain. What? Well, uh, Mr. Collins. Surprise? What? I, I, I thought you and Mrs. Collins... In the village? Were... No, we had a slight disagreement. I came back 15 minutes ago, slipped aboard during your uh, transaction on the dock. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Well, we had a small shipment for Bouquet. <laughs> and, uh... oh, come, come, Captain. I know better. What? I know what's been going on, you see. Respected you for quite some time, but I... Wasn't quite certain until the night. Nice racket. Captain, been chiseling on the old man in one way or another for years, haven't you? Oh, now, now, wait a minute, Mr. Collins. I, I don't know what you're oh, talking about. Don't get me wrong. I don't care. I don't care at all. As far as what happened tonight, well, I didn't see a thing. Not a thing. Oh? That's right. The old man need never know about tonight. And other nights, eh, Captain? You can go right on with your little sideline, only... Only what? You're cutting in a new partner. Partner? You mean that you... A night of surprises, isn't it? Frankly, I need the money, Captain. Oh, sure, sure. That's a I big I know laugh. what you're thinking, but the old man doesn't believe in pampering me. He wants me to learn the business from the ground up, just as he did. Okay, so the old man doesn't give you so much spending money, but his own son... His own son, yes. And there's something else. You see, he's never approved of Lucille. He wouldn't. Matter of fact, I don't approve of her anymore either. So? Didn't it take me long to find out what she was really after? Money. Money, all she can get. I hate her. That's one thing I'm sure of. Someday I'm going to... Do you know her? Maybe better than I do. Yeah, maybe I do. What was her cut going to be for keeping her mouth shut, luring me into the village tonight? 20%? Oh, that doesn't sound at all like Lucille. Sure, it wasn't 50%, Captain? 20. Well, in any case, I'm not prepared to settle for that. Nor am I going to settle for 50%. 70, 30, Captain. That's how we're going to split it. 70 for me, 30 for you. 70, 30? Now, wait a On minute. On the you... other hand, a word from me to the port authorities, a wire to the old man, and well, you'd be lucky to get off for 10 years. Suppose I told the old man you tried to make a deal. Suppose I told he him... He wouldn't believe you. Let's face it. Why don't you just play along like a good boy, Captain? I'm sure we'll do very well together. What about Lucille? Lucille? Well, I've completely forgotten her, old man. Yes, yeah, she's uh, more your problem. I see. Do you? Well, then I can turn in, enjoy a good night's sleep. And as for Lucille... Well, since she seems to be concentrating so much on you... Now, wait a minute. Really, she can cause you a great deal of trouble. She's out there in the village now. Why don't you talk it over with her? Possibly you can persuade her to get out of our lives. Permanently. Remember, Captain, ten years in prison is a terribly, terribly long time. Good night. <laughs> Ten years, Ernie. Yes, you'd be lucky to get off that easily. You pace the floor of your cabin, wondering what you must do. There must be some way you can work things out. Finally, you make up your mind. You've got to find Lucille, tell her what's happened, and get her out of Bouquet somehow. You hurry out of the cabin, down the gangplank, and as you step on the wharf, something causes you to look back. And there, standing at the ship's rail, Colin. A grin on his face. Good hunting, Captain. 
good hunting. <laughs> Your first stop in the village is Jesse's Bar, a small smoke-filled room crowded with men from the world's waterfront. Well, well, if it ain't the skipper himself. Hello, Ernie, me lad. Hello, Jess. Sit down, sit down. Have a drink with old Jess. Uh, next time, uh, I'm looking for somebody. Well, she ain't here. What? It's a day, ain't it? Sure. Well, I ain't seen the kind you'd be looking for. Not in here, I ain't. Red hair, wearing a white suit. Oh, sure, pal. She was sitting right here at the bar. Of course, it was a good hour ago. A guy was with her. I ain't seen him since. Tall, lot of white teeth grinning. That's him. Only he wasn't grinning. They was having an argument, a real beaut, see? Had most of the customers watching them instead of drinking their liquor. I thought they was going to kill each other. Your next stop is the Paradise Cafe, but Lucille isn't there. Then you try the Dutchman's Bar. After that, the Blue Whale, the Seaman's Club. But she's nowhere to be found. Two hours have gone by, Ernie. And you're certain now that she's gone back to the ship. You're about to turn back yourself when you finally see her sitting in a booth at Jin Lee's place. But there's someone with her, isn't there, Ernie? You recognize him as Frank Quinlan, the skipper of a small inter-island ship. You stand at the door, puzzled. See her hand him some money. Then she gets up. You step back out into the street and wait in the shadows. The seal. What? Oh, oh, it's you, Ernie. Uh, just on my way back to the ship. What are you doing here? Collins. He's on to us, sweetheart. Knows the whole thing. Come on, let's find a nice, quiet place where we can talk. You grab her arm, tell her what's happened as you hurry along the darkened street. You walk a long way till you find yourself on a lonely stretch of road, a good mile from the dock where the prowler is tied up. It's quiet and deserted. Yeah, this is a desolate place. I wasn't paying any attention to where we were walking. We'd better turn back, head for the boat, huh? This is as far as we go, Ernie. What? I knew where we were walking. This will do fine right here. What's the idea of the gun? My gun? The idea is I want you to hand over that money, the payoff. I want it, Ernie, all of it. Oh. So that's it, huh? That's why you were having that little chat with Quinlan. You saw me? You are grabbing the dough and he's getting you out of here. That's right, and you're not going to be around to tell anyone about it, Annie, darling. I'm sorry it had to turn out like this. I really am. Oh, yeah, sure, sure, sure. You... Oh, oh. Now, baby, now I've got your gun, and I like it that way better. Annie, don't be a chump. No, I won't, baby. Not anymore. <laughs> As we go into the rainy season, scientific lubrication is even more important to your car to keep moisture from working into vital moving parts and causing damage. That's why I think you'll be interested in knowing about some of the extras you enjoy when you have your car lubricated at a signal service station. Now, first of all, signal dealers don't take any chance on memory when it comes to the many lubrication points on your car. Instead, they check against Signal's factory-recommended lubrication chart which clearly shows every part. Then they use nine specialized signal oils and greases, so each part will get the exact type of protection it needs. And finally, just to make doubly sure not a single part has been overlooked, they check each part again, which explains why we call it signal double-check lubrication. Now, that's the kind of lube job you want if your car is to give you the long, trouble-free service that was built into it. And that's the kind of lubrication you get from conscientious, independent signal dealers. Lucille's dead, isn't she, Ernie? You look down at her. 
then at her gun in your hand, and realize that one big obstacle has been eliminated. And now there's only Charles Collins, Lucille's husband, back in the boat. If he were eliminated, there would be no one to stand in the way. As you hurry back to the boat, you know what you must do. Shoot Collins, put out to sea, and dump his body overboard. You move quickly, noiselessly aboard the prowler. No one's in sight. You move quietly along the deck to Charles Collins' cabin. Lucille's gun gripped in your hand. You open the door, walk slowly in, reach the bunk, and snap on the lamp on the table beside it. You've made a mistake, haven't you, Ernie? For an instant, you stand there. Then you realize you've got to get out, somewhere where you can think. Hurriedly, you slip out onto the deck, close the cabin door behind you, and move along in the shadows toward the ramp. Just a moment there. Uh, who, who's that? Sergeant Morrison, who get police. Who are you? Uh, I'm Ernie Hill, captain of this ship. Well, what are you doing here? I came in answer to a call from the dock watchman. He says he heard a shot around here not too long ago. Do you know anything about it? No. Uh, no, I don't. I, I haven't been here. Is I... your cabin the one you just left? Uh, no, no, it isn't. It belongs to a passenger. The name's Collins. You seem quite anxious to leave it. In something of a rush. I'll have to search you, Captain. Hey, wait a minute. Uh, What's the idea? Uh, I'll just take your gun, Captain. Now, let's take a look in Mr. Collins' cabin, eh? Wait. We don't have to. Collins is in there, all right. He's dead. I'll wager ballistics will show that this gun killed him. Yes, it, it probably did, but it isn't my gun. I, I didn't do it. He was dead when I got there. He, he'd been dead for quite a while. You can see for yourself. Maybe you're right. We knew there was something wrong when the dock watchman called us about the shot. We figured whoever did it must belong on this ship. That's why we've been waiting around. You'll never believe me, Sergeant, but I didn't do it. She did it, his wife, Lucille. That's her gun. She killed him. They, they quarreled and she followed him back to the boat and shot him. And then she disappeared into thin air. And I find you leaving the cabin with a murder weapon in your hand. No, Captain. You were right the first time. We'll never believe you. Let that whistle be your signal for the Signal Oil program, The Whistler each Sunday night at this same time. Signal Oil Company has asked me to remind you that your contribution to the community chest will not only support the countless red feather agencies, but in addition, this year's contribution must meet the vastly increased need for moral, spiritual, and recreational programs for our men and women in uniform. <laughs> Featured in tonight's story were Bill Foreman, Bill Conrad, and Betty Lou Gerson. The Whistler was produced and directed by George W. Allen, with story by Joel Malone, music by Wilbur Hatch, and was transmitted to our troops overseas by the Armed Forces Radio Service. The Whistler is entirely fictional, and all characters portrayed on The Whistler are also fictional. Any similarity of names or resemblance to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. Remember at this same time next Sunday, another strange tale by The Whistler. Marvin Miller speaking for the Signal Oil Company. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.